projectors are recognized in human design as the natural guides and advisors for the other energy types, specifically uh, generators and manifestors. And I think today, you know, the emphasis and the intent that I have with, with a presentation like this is just really recognizing the projector type and encouraging their success. Now, of course, success means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But for the projector type, that is, in fact, the signature, right? Success being that you are operating in such a way where you are content and feeling recognized for your contributions to others and essentially making a positive impact in the lives of the people around you, uh, all the while doing your best to avoid the bitterness trap and, uh, you know, exhaustion and all the typical things that go along with being a projector, which we're going to get into today. Another interesting thing I wanted to mention to you before we move on from this slide is just considering the projector design, okay? Projectors are very interesting at a mechanical level, or at least at the chart level when you look at their design, because all of the channels, which are all these black lines connecting the centers, that a projector will have consistently in their body graph are all referred to, uh, referred to as projected channels okay it's one of the reasons why projectors are referred to as projectors one being their focused and absorbing aura and the other being the fact that all the channels that they do have are projected they're different from the um the sacral channels or the channels that originate from the sacral center and they're very different from the solar plexus to the throat or ego to the throat channels that are referred to as manifesting or manifested channels, okay? It's just a little thing to become mindful of and aware of when learning about the projector type, either for yourself or others, is that the projector will always have projected channels. And these are channels essentially that are here to be recognized by other people for the unique quality, strength, or skill that they bring to the relationship or dynamic at hand which is why it's really important for projectors, for you guys listening, to become familiar with the channels that you do have in your design, because in many ways, that those are your strengths, right? Those are the, the life force qualities that you're here to be recognized for as a unique being and invited into situations to share with others, okay? And of course, there's obviously taking in the wisdom through the openness, which we'll cover in a little bit. As you can see again from this illustration, from this graphic, there are a lot of projected channels. They are the most numerous in the body graph. There's just so many projected channels that I figured it would be best just to focus on the three categories today and not try to not try to talk about every single one of the projected channels because I think we'd probably be here for a week. All right, so today we're gonna cover a range of subjects regarding or topics regarding the projector type. They're honestly, if you really wanted to go into depth and detail on even just the topics that we're going to cover today, you could spend months because the projector type is so complex. There are so many different categories. There are different categories. There's different variations. The projectors have the most number of inner authorities of all the different types. And like I said before, with all the different projected channels that are a part of the projector design, uh, being able to recognize someone's unique qualities is something you could literally write a course on in and of itself. So today, though, what we're going to do is just cover some of the basics and the fundamentals of the projector type to help complement those who have already begun their self-study and their experiment. And those of you who are listening in that are brand new, uh, you'll be able to learn some pretty important details and facts about the projector type today that should help you understand yourself. And of course, if you have uh, friends or family members, colleagues in your life who are also projectors, being able to recognize them and encourage them and um, help them along with their process as is appropriate. Okay, so we're going to look at what makes a projector a projector. We've already talked a little bit about that in terms of the channel construct. Uh, three project The three projector categories, we're going to have a look at the projector strategy and the different projector inner authorities that complement one's unique inner um, decision-making strategy, okay? And then, of course, have a look at the binary for the signature versus the not-self theme for the projector type, which is success versus bitterness. And then we'll wrap it up with uh, some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years for helping to support projectors, both for you guys individually listening. And again, like I said, if you have family members or friends who are projectors, some guidance that uh, 
that can be used to help them in their unique process, okay? And then we'll wrap it up with the Q&A and uh, have a look at some charts if you guys are open for that, okay? So first and foremost, what makes a projector a projector? Why is it that when you punched in your birth data into the human design software, the chart rendering machine uh, returned to you type as projector, okay? Some of you who have studied already, you'll know the answer to this. Uh, but of course, those of you who have not, it may be a new and unique insight for you to take in. Okay. All projectors will have in their design, first and foremost, what we refer to as an undefined or open sacral center, which is this white square second up from the bottom Okay, in the chart. That is the first main commonality between every single projector chart that you will run, okay? Projectors have an inconsistent availability for productivity, reproductivity, and even in many ways, creativity, okay? We are designed as projectors to take in, amplify, utilize, and ideally guide and manage the life force energy of others, okay? But the <clears throat> projector design, unlike generators, is not built for long-term or even in certain circumstances, short-term labor or repeated heavy lifting tasks, work, um, even intimate relationships, okay, is always going to be a projector or like an amplified <clears throat> theme for the projector, okay? And again, like I said, the first and most significant commonality between all projectors is the fact that they have an undefined sacral center. We're really not here to work or labor. We are here to be sensitive to and receptive to the life force energies of others. And when invited, brought into a situation where we can guide and manage those resources for the betterment of either an individual or a group. Okay. And now the second major reason well, the only other reason why a projector is a projector mechanically is they have what we refer to as no motor center connected to the throat, okay? And again, for those of you who are self-studied, you already know the motor centers. For those of you who are not, they include the root, the solar plexus. Of course, the sacral is going to be undefined, so that's not going to have any connection. But it's really the root, the solar plexus, and or the ego do not have a direct and consistent uh, link through a channel within the projector's design to the throat center, okay? And this is pretty significant because, again, in human design, we recognize manifesting as a label, uh, as a consistency in somebody's design when their throat center has a consistent link to an energy center, okay? Where that energy can flow to the throat center as an outlet for communication, action, taking, and expression in the world, Okay, so like, for example, all manifestors will always have a defined uh, throat center and that defined throat center will be in some way, shape or form through their chart connected to a motor, okay? But projectors, like I said, are not built that way. Of course, projectors can have defined throats. You can have a throat connected to the G or to the Ajna or maybe to uh, the spleen, Okay, so you can have a consistent capacity for conceptualization, communica communication, being a leader or a creative role model for others and having a unique direction and identity in life and being very intuitive and instinctive. That can be a consistent part of the projector nature, but we are not designed to be laborious, action-taking, manifesting type of people. It's really not our trip. Um, of course, the conditioning experience for the projector is to be just that, right? Is to, you know, take in the generative life force energy of others and to take in the manifesting life force energy of others and try to hold on to it and be like that. But of course, all that's going to lead to over time is a sense of bitterness when that energy fades and you're no longer capable of sustaining that kind of workload or that kind of responsibility, okay? Like I said, the projector is here to be a guide. The projector is here to take in the energy of others, to be sensitive to the energy of others, and to provide wisdom, advice, guidance, to provide a skill, to be recognized for their creative capacities, okay? 
but it's different than being a generator and it's very different than being a manifester. We have a, we have a unique role to play that's different from either of those two types, okay? So non-sacral and no motor to the throat. Now, and I didn't actually write it down, but it's important to mention that technically the projector type is referred to as a non-energy type in human design, which is kind of a misnomer. And you'll see that when we have a look at the three different projector categories that include energy projectors, because you can have projectors that have eight of the nine centers defined in their chart and have a tremendous amount of energy for doing things or manifesting or, you know, taking action in the world. It would seem, okay, it would seem. But again, they're not going to have that consistent access to the juicy, lovely, reproductive, responsive, you know, uh, life force energy of the sacral. And they're not going to have that consistency for manifesting, taking action or initiating on their own, okay? We're here to guide. We're here to be recognized for the channels that we have in our design and be seen as a trusted advisor and companion and insightful person, you know, for those that we connect with. Kind of like being a manager versus a laborer, okay? The aura for the projectors, uh, keynoted as being focused and absorbing. You could also think of it as being very attentive and engaging. Ideally, the projector works one-on-one -on -one uh, with the person across from them and is able to connect with them in a deep and intimate way, taking in their energy, being sensitive to the energy, and again, being able to project back, whether it be advice, guidance, wisdom, or just a sense of recognition for what the projector sees in the person across from them, okay? And then, of course, that can apply to, you know, friends, family members, intimate relationships, but also in the context of a uh, of a working professional environment, okay? The projector aura is best one-on-one -on -one or outside looking in. It's all coming back to the theme of recognition and what the projector can recognize and the people that they're engaged with and the kind of wisdom and advice that they can pass on to those people as a result of that engagement, okay? Ideally, it's said that projectors are to, you know, find a way to become sought after part-time specialists in a niche that resonates with their particular channel definition so that you're not in a situation as a projector where you become burnt out, exhausted, and embittered trying to work, 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 manifest, 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 falling flat on your face and feeling the effects of chronic fatigue, right? Uh, which is quite common for the projector type. Again, due to the experience of conditioning and how that conditioning is processed within our bodies. Okay. So again, like I said, non-sacral, no motor to the throat, but we're here to be recognized for our focused and absorbing aura and the channels that we do have as they show up uniquely in our design. Okay. And also just having a look at the uh, human design type statistics, you can see that projectors are around 22.58% of the population. This uh, database is based off of 43 million chart calculations as of my last check. So it's a pretty accurate representation of the uh, relative percentage to the global population. So it's just another thing to be mindful of. You know, technically projectors are a minority. There are way more generators and manifesting generators than there are projectors. You know, uh, we are here to be a guide for many and... Uh, yeah, this is also to take into consideration that, you know, the world is filled with the energy types and we take in that energy, we amplify it from a young age and we try to mimic it, we try to replicate it. Um, I think one of the biggest gifts for any projector is um, being able to find out about their design when they're relatively young so that be they can begin to practice um, strategy, inner authority, experimenting with their openness in terms of becoming aware of where they're being conditioned and really sticking to being and developing and focusing on their channel definition as who they are, okay? Which again, like I said, is not, is different from a generative life force and it's very different from a manifesting life force, okay? This is a really big topic in human design actually for projectors. 
Like I said, some of you who have self-studied will be already familiar with this. Those of you who have not, it may be something new. And it's definitely something to note and pay attention to, especially if you know your design or you're listening to this to learn about somebody else's design that's that's close to you, whether it be like a, um, a child or a friend or another family member, okay? And the important insight here is that there are actually three different projector categories, okay? Although the projector type as a label, like I said before, means that you're non-sacral, no motor to the throat, beyond that surface level reality, there is also a very distinct uh, categorization of projectors that's really important to become aware of because as you look at these charts, there are classic projectors, okay? There are energy projectors, and there are what we refer to as mental projectors and they are very different from one another they are almost almost their own type okay the only again the only commonality that they have is non-sacral no motor to the throat but really everything else about the classic projector the energy projector and the mental projector and how they are energy functions and what it's like to live as one of those projector categories as an individual is a very different experience okay when you look at the classic projector which is the um, the chart example on the left hand side here what you'll notice is that there's definition below the throat but no motors okay so that could include the 1057 as well you can have the g center connected to the spleen center and be a classic projector uh, the channel of talent 4816 here we have our talented projectors those who are musically inclined and have a, can have a beautiful voice and singing voice you know uh, and of course the leadership channels that run up between the g center and the throat all would qualify you as a, a classic projector when and if you also at the same time do not have any of the motor centers defined in your chart okay uh, classic projectors are also can also be referred to as no motor projectors similar to mental projectors where you do not have one of the energetic centers okay or the pressure center or the emotions or the willpower and ego available from the heart uh, as a part of that person's unique characteristics uh, therefore classic projectors are typically like mental projectors seen as slightly more sensitive uh, and can really taste and take in the energy of others through their open centers um, and often what you'll see with classic projectors at least what i've seen in my practice is a lot of them are splenic inner authority so they're very intuitive and very instinctive and they have an amazing ability to be existential in their communication be very fast and 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 understanding and sharing what they know about somebody and about a situation while at the same time taking in the energies of others and being very sensitive to those people so it's especially important for the classic projector uh, category to be really mindful of the people that you're around because you are completely vulnerable at the energetic center level to taking in and amplifying uh, other people's pressures other people's reproductivity and productivity energy other people's emotions other people's ego and zeal okay those are all themes that are going to be taken in amplified and sampled by the people around you so so definitely something to be mindful as a classic projector when inviting or uh, when not inviting but when uh, accepting or declining invitations okay is who are you around and what kind of advice can you really provide those people okay as a guide and as an existential um, leader in many situations because again this is where you'll see uh projectors with self-projected inner authority uh, will be classic projectors okay and of course the second category of projectors very different from the classic is the energy Okay, so there, there are energy or what is also referred to as pressure projectors when you have a defined root center like myself, uh, where you now begin to see within the, within the projector construct energy centers that are defined in this person's design. So 
like I said, it's a very different experience for that individual to be a classic projector with no motors than it is to be an energy projector with all this pressure and emotion and willpower and zeal and heightened intuitive instincts for, for you know, maybe potentially having a drive and ambition to rise up and be athletically accomplished. And, you know, um, not to say that classic projectors or mental projectors cannot be athletically accomplished, but again, these, um, the channels that run between the root and the spleen are referred to as athletic channels. It's kind of a pressure that needs to be released and it's often done in the most healthy way through athletics, okay? Um, and what you'll see again, like with, like I said, with the energy projectors is they have at least one motor center defined, uh, whether it be the uh, the root to the spleen, so the root would be the one center, <clears throat> or the, the ego to the spleen, or the root to the solar plexus, or the solar plexus to the ego, or all three. Okay, all three being the energy centers. And when you're a pro energy projector, like I said earlier, uh, <laughs> it can seem like you have a ton of energy to do things and uh, be active and march around and be self-sufficient and self-supporting and wake up every day and feel capable of engaging with the world and taking on responsibilities and tasks. And uh, that's true. And, you know, it's just, to, again, be mindful of the fact that the energy within an energy projector is a pressure that needs to be released through healthy invitations and, and engagements and activities that don't bring you to a point of exhaustion. And that's a dangerous thing uh, with being an energy projector. You can, you can take on responsibilities or invitations and feel like you have a tremendous amount of energy to bring to that dynamic and still be conditioned through the sacral and the fact that you're non- manifesting and end up bitter, exhausted, and wondering why everything is falling apart, even though you feel like you have the energy to, to do things and uh, to be active. And okay. You also got to be mindful as an energy projector of invitations where people just want to bring you in to take on a part-time labor job, right? Here, oh yeah, can you come over here and do this for me? Right? Because that person's recognizing that you have energy but again, be mindful of the fact that as an energy projector, you're not about work, 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 and you're not about manifest. You're here about to be a guide, okay? To specialize, to provide guidance, advice, leadership when invited. And of course, last but not least, um, are the mental projectors. So mental projectors, again, are very different from classic, very different from energy, and they are unique because of a number of different things. First and foremost, they do not have definition below the throat center. So what you'll often see is like a 4323 projector, or sometimes you will just like this picture uh, illustrates, will have a defined head, ajna, and throat. So the pressure to conceptualize and communicate will be a part of their design. Or sometimes you'll actually just have the head and the ajna connected with an undefined throat center and everything else will be open or undefined in their chart, okay? Mental projectors, two things. First and foremost, because they have no uh, centers below the throat, they have no actual inner authority. Um, their inner authority process is what we refer to as sounding board. And the sounding board inner authority will cover when we get there, uh, is different than like an energy projector tuning into their emotions and giving themselves time or a classic projector being uh, connected to and deeply sort of embodying their intuitive awareness, all right, for making decisions. Mental projectors really do need to talk things over with people that they can trust so that they can express their ideas and express their concepts and express what they recognize at a mental level, okay, and be able to share that and and hear themselves speak, okay? It's not necessarily to take in what the other person has to say about what you're thinking about doing or the invitation you're considering and uh, accepting. It's about just being able to hear yourself speak, okay? Because again, what you'll note with the mental projector is that they are often referred to as a pure outer authority for others, okay? Whereas their speaking, their intellect, their conceptual capacities, their mind, okay, is really their, is their jewel, is what they're here to be recognized for, and uh, is what's most consistent about their nature. Um, but of course, given the fact that there's no definition below the throat, uh, often you will, you do see mental projectors that 
uh, are deeply conditioned. And that conditioned, that deconditioning process um, requires support from other people, right? It requires friendly reminders and acceptance and recognition and uh, yeah, acceptance within oneself that you are not the amplified energy that you have experienced your whole life. Rather, you are basically processing that energy coming in from other people and here to be recognized for your intellectual gifts and being able to measure and communicate. And yeah, like I said, be a pure utter authority for others. Okay. So again, just consider your own design, consider maybe the designs of those people in your life and see how there are very big differences even within the projector type in terms of the categories of projectors. Um, and then of course, even within that, looking at someone's unique chart, there are a ton of different variations for how these channels actually show up. Okay, and that's that's all in the art of analysis and being able to more understand, you know, better understand your unique configuration. I have never seen any statistics on the categories. So that's why I didn't include them. I don't know if that's been tracked. I don't think it's been tracked in terms of like, what's the ratio of classic projectors to energy projectors to mental projectors. I'm not quite sure. Um, <clears throat> in my own practice, just running charts over the years, it's honestly almost a fair balance in terms of what I've seen. Maybe um, more so in the collective, uh, the classic projector, and then the energy projector and the mental in terms of popularity. But that wouldn't be, you know, that's just my own subjective uh, or limited library. Um, I don't have millions, and millions of charts to be able to give you guys accurate statistics I'm not quite sure um but yeah nevertheless you can see that there are three projector categories they're very different from each other and they have their own unique strengths and challenges through the context of how they're going to be exposed to conditioning okay and the expectations placed upon them by others uh, when the others don't recognize them as projectors so the projector strategy um all the types in human design are assigned a strategy. And the strategy is like a strategic way of being able to navigate important decisions in life so that you remain true to your authentic nature and stay on track with the role and the energetic function, if not limitation, of your type. And limitation, not in a bad way, but you know, every type has their own unique role to play and uh, a certain way in which the energy is meant to flow through you in a way that brings you your signature, okay? So the projector strategy is uh, waiting for the invitation, is the decision-making strategy for the projector type. And as you'll see, genuine invitations come with recognition, access to energy, resources, and appreciation. Again, due to the fact that the projector is non-sacral, so we're not here to work, 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 and we're not here to manifest, 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 action, take, action, take, okay? We're here to be recognized for something different. And what we're here to be recognized for has a lot to do, like I mentioned before, with the nature of the channels in our charts, okay? And it really is those channels and the gifts and the strengths that you embody within those channels as a projector that you're waiting for recognition and an invitation to share with others, okay? And of course, that's going to be very unique to you and how it shows up in your life. It's important to note with the projector strategy because over the years this has been taken to many different extremes um, that you do not need an invitation to express yourself, enjoy your interests, or tend to daily tasks or mundane responsibilities. Okay, It's not like the generator strategy, which is this existential moment by moment, responding to life, responding to this task, responding to the last task, yes or no for this, yes or no for that. For the projector, it's more about these four major decisions that we're really encouraged to be mindful of. And those are relationships or love, okay? Studies and career, those often get um, bundled together because you often study to pursue a certain career. Partnerships and a place to live, okay? Those are really the four major decisions where waiting for the invitation is most crucial 
Okay. You're waiting to be recognized and invited into a relationship. You're waiting to be recognized and invited into studies or a career based on your own personal interests or area of expertise. Okay. And you're waiting to be recognized and inviting into, let's say, like a business partnership where, you know, let's say you have a LinkedIn profile and you've got all your qualifications listed as a projector and some, you know, uh, someone from another company finds your profile and says, wow, this person has exactly what we're looking for. They send you an invitation to collaborate. Okay. And of course, a place to live. And you have to recognize that as a projector, what you're really looking for is invitations that bring access to energy, resources, and of course, recognition and appreciation. Okay. Again, it can be really difficult because, you know, invitations don't come every day. Uh, like I said, it's really for four major decisions in life, and there are challenges, okay? There are challenges that come up and show up for us, mostly when we are operating incorrectly as our type, okay? That make the projector strategy difficult to apply and hard to notice or believe will ever actually work for us, okay? Because we have been conditioned to work we have been conditioned to manifest and we have been conditioned to try to go out there and make it on our own when really the projector type is more collaborative in nature. Okay. And these challenges can show up as like I said, laboring to survive or getting stuck in a job, a nine to five where you're expected to show up and put out a lot of energy every single day. Okay. Forcing things to happen based on a, an idea, uh, of course, exhaustion, and exhaustion can show up in many different ways for people. Um, you can map it back to their unique design to see which centers are most uh, sort of susceptible and vulnerable to that. I see a lot of undefined or open root uh, projectors who suffer from things like chronic fatigue and adrenal burnout, okay, due to an overextension of their personal resources, um, internal personal resources. And of course, conditioning through the open centers. Um, you know, remember, human design is living knowledge. You're always taking in the energy of other people. You're taking in the energy of the transits. And you yourself, although there is that consistency of what we refer to as your design, you're always experiencing energies on from a day-to-day -day basis in a different sort of way. So, you know, for example, you may have a long-term transit that brings energetic definition to the throat, and it feels like you have a tremendous amount of energy to initiate, and you take charge and start to act on that particular project outside of the context of an invitation or collaboration with others, and you just end up exhausted at the end of it and uh, unsuccessful in your pursuits, potentially. Okay, and that can be a reason why projectors end up so burnt out, bitter, frustrated. Okay. And I say frustrated because of course, <laughs> you know, amplification of sacral energy and uh, the misuse of that amplification can certainly be a frustrating experience. Okay. I added underdevelopment again as a challenge as well, because again, you know, projectors, you gotta develop a skill, you gotta develop an ability, you gotta develop your channels and be recognized for the gifts that you embody consistently and really lean into them and trust that the recognition, the invitations will come over time. Um, it's like if we ignore ourselves and we don't give ourselves or invest in ourselves to develop our abilities as a projector, it can be really challenging for us to receive those recognitions that are a good match for us in the long run, okay? And of course, just general resistance from others where when projectors try to butt in or uh, offer, you know, unsolicited advice or, you know, charge into a situation headstrong and kind of a stubborn attitude. And, you know, people don't necessarily like that, you know, like I remember, think back to the projector aura, the projector aura is focused and absorbing. You're taking in other people's energies and you're also focused on them at the, at the exact same time. And it can be quite an experience to be on the other end of a projector, you know, and you've got to be mindful of how penetrating your energy can be and uh, really waiting for the invitations to connect. Okay. And, you know, utilizing your wisdom and your inner authority 
because it's like like they say the knowledge the, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is knowledge is you know what to say and wisdom is uh, you know knowing whether or not you say it okay and i think for a projector that's really key is to be mindful of how powerful your energy is one on one and to you know know that it's quite an experience to be on the receiving end of a projector energy aura when you're focused on that person across from you okay And of course, you know, one of the biggest things, the biggest why in terms of waiting for invitations is that you you get to experience a receptivity to your guidance when there's nothing better, right? It's like when someone is really inviting you based on them recognizing you for your channel definition and your unique strengths, talents, and gifts as a projector, and they're open to your guidance, there's no resistance. There's no friction. There's no expectation that you're going to do something that you're not designed to do, Right. You're being recognized for who you are, and therefore you can play your part easily and with a low energy expenditure to be able to experience your signature, which is success. Okay. So yeah, waiting for invitations. And like I said, it's really about the four major decisions. You can obviously in your own personal experiment, try it for smaller things like waiting for an invitation to go to a movie or waiting for an invitation to go on a trip or waiting for an invitation to do this or do that. But, you know, it's really for the big things because once you're in a relationship, you are free to operate. And of course, like all the different types, human design, all types have inner authorities that accompany their strategy. Remember the strategy is the sort of entry point. Okay, I know I'm being invited as a projector. That means I have a decision to make. Um, and then you, you default to your inner guidance process, which we refer to as inner authority, in order to help you make that decision in such a way that complements your unique nature. Uh, what you'll notice about the projectors is that the projectors have the greatest range of inner authorities of all types. Uh, there are five different inner authorities. And again, the inner authorities also play into the... Uh, the projector categories in many ways as well. If you have solar plexus inner authority, you by definition will be an energy projector. The projector with the solar plexus inner authority process, again, receiving an invitation and giving yourself some time to feel into whether or not you're truly, you know, capable of living into the invitation, if the invitation is correct for you and processing that decision through your wave, not being spontaneous and accepting an invitation at first, uh, at first take, which can be very tempting and, <laughs> and difficult not to do. I know. Um, I know. Trust me. It really, and see the thing being emotional, you na naturally often will have this like chemistry of excitement and passion and, you know, um, sort of a, a zest for want to engage in social interactions. And of course, the moment you receive an invitation, it's like, oh my God, yeah, totally. But, you know, give yourself time to feel into things, move through your wave and find clarity over time. If you're a splenic projector, it's very different from the emotional inner authority or the solar plexus inner authority. You are really about being existential and attuned to your intuitive awareness in the now moment, okay? Paying attention to your gentle inner voice or that whisper of bodily intuition and intelligence that speaks, intelligence that speaks to you when you receive an invitation, okay? That's really about keeping you safe and potentially keeping other people safe, okay? Um, of course, if you have a splenic inner authority as a projector, just be mindful of the fact that it means that you have an undefined or open solar plexus. So you're going to be taking in and amplifying the emotions of the people around you. And it can take some practice and experimentation in your own life to discern the difference between your intuition and other people's emotions when accepting or declining uh, invitations. You know, for example, you can be around someone who offers you an invitation. They're really passionate and excited about it. And you can get swept up into that passion and excitement when really the whole time your splenic inner authority is like red flag, red flag, red flag. Okay. And it ends up being a situation where it doesn't really work out for your benefit. Um, just be mindful of that. Okay. It's ex ex existential, especially if it connects to the throat, the 5720 or the 4816, what you say based on what sort of what you hear in the now moments, pretty much your truth. Okay. Self-projected is a very unique um, projector inner authority. 
And what you'll often see with self-projected inner authority is that people um, only have G-center definition to the throat. And these are our leaders. These are our pure alphas, creative role models, and prodigals, all committed to higher principles in that moment. And when you have self-projected inner authority, it's really about listening to your voice and um, you know, engaging in invitations that bring you a sense of happiness and bring you a sense of recognition as a leader, as an alpha, as a creative as someone, as someone who is existential in the now moment, uh, who can provide guidance and direction to others, um, especially in that leadership capacity. Okay, I often see uh, self-projected projectors, for example, that are seven thirty ones. So you know they are the ones who have a role in society to have influence and come up with a plan and strategy as to how we're going to go forward into the future. And so, if you're a seven thirty one self-projected projector, you know just take note that. Is kind of one of your strengths to be an alpha, be the leader of the group, be recognized and invited to be the leader of the group. And uh, yeah, just listening to your voice and processing, you know, listen to what you say in, re in reaction to the invitation. Okay, it's the truth. So it's like if someone invites you to lead their team and you say no, <laughs> uh, you know, yield to that. And vice versa, if you say yes, Sure, I'd be happy to lead your team. Um, it's your truth, okay? Ego projected, as you see here, ego projected uh, is the most rare inner authority. I think I actually, and I think I actually saw a couple of you guys uh, when running charts actually have this, but it's something I really do not see very often um, in practice, but it does exist. Ego projected inner authority. And it's a connection between the heart center and the G center through the channel of initiation and design meaning to be first. Uh, you know, having ego projected in your authority, really, if you sum it up, has a lot to do with whether or not that projector has the will to compete and the willpower to engage with the invitation and the interaction uh, or situation that's being presented to them or not. Okay. Um, and, and of course, remember the ego is work rest. So, you know, accepting a long-term labor invitation as an ego projected projector because you think you have, oh, I have a defined ego, therefore I can work every day. No, you know, it's um, on off and uh, yeah, being seen as, initiate, as an initiator, or someone who initiates someone who's sort of competitive and brings a competitive spirit into the interaction, okay? And of course, last but not least, the sounding board inner authority. I sort of touched upon this previously when we talked about mental projectors. We have sounding board inner authority. It's really important to uh, talk about your the decision at hand with someone that you trust so that you can hear yourself speak. Um, your, your truth is spoken. Okay, it's spoken from the ajna, down from the head into the throat. Um, and of course, just like with all of the other well, inner authorities that lack emotional definition, it's also fair to say as a sounding board or a mental projector, that you want to be really mindful of taking in the emotions and passions and expectations of other people uh, because that can sort of dilute or um, color your, your unique inner authority process, which can in the long run just lead you into more conditioning and a greater sense of uh, bitterness rather than success, okay? Like I said, as a sounding board, inner authority mental projector, you are here to be a pure outer authority for others. You know, someone who can really speak and guide and conceptualize and be good with their mind and how they can organize the facts, explain things, or really tell stimulating stories to attract attention and get people to pay attention to their guidance, okay? So yeah, th those are the inner authority variations. As a, projecting, as a projector, uh, you'll have one of them and it's, again, it's just a further layer of differentiation about your nature that uh, as you guys are starting to practice with human design and, be, and really beginning to embody it at a deeper level within your everyday life is to be mindful of, you know, yes, I'm a projector and I'm an energy projector with solar plexus inner authority. Or yes, I'm a projector and I'm a classic projector with self-projected inner authority. Okay. And just to be mindful of those differences because it can really help you in the long run, like I said before, resonate and attune to your unique uh, design and find a greater level of success because you are committing yourself 
to situations, relationships, engagements, invitations that you're actually designed to handle. And um, one of the things I'll mention too is a projector, you know, more often than not, you're not going to be invited to sit in an in an isolated cell somewhere where it's just you, okay? Often as a projector, you're going to be invited into relationships. And those relationships, more often than not, statistically speaking, be filled with generators or manifestors, okay? So it's also just to consider that, you know, as a projector, interaction with the energy types is inevitable. It's how you navigate those relationships according to your strategy, according to your inner authority. When you first enter into them, that is most critical, okay? And uh, yeah, just being being aware of the fact that you are we are as projectors designed to be conditioned, but we want to be able to be conditioned and experience that conditioning in a healthy um, and happy way. Okay, that doesn't leave us feeling bitter. That actually leaves us feeling successful. Okay, which is the projector signature. Uh, you know, when projectors are able to live without resistance and they understand their channels and they're operating as their, the qualities and the strengths of their channels. And they're, you know, really expressing themselves in that way. Um, just due to the insightful nature of the projector type, more often than not, the success that you can bring into other people's lives through the sharing of your wisdom and guidance is the same success that you get to experience uh, in reciprocity or exchange. Okay. And again, the projector signature being success, and I have a definition here that I think it's appropriate because it's not it's not always about material success, you know. Like, uh, not every projector is meant to be, you know, a Jeff Bezos. Not that I particularly um, have a like or dislike for Jeff Bezos, like founder of Amazon, but he is a projector according to his publicly available first time so it's it's not about becoming a multi-billionaire okay in terms of how we look at success and the projector process it's really about feeling fulfilled and appreciated for one's contributions and having a positive effect on the lives of others okay and again that positive effect has come through the context of the guidance that you can provide the insights that you can share the stories that you can tell the recognition that you can provide you know when it interacting with a healthy projector who is content and comfortable within their own skin and is able to look across to the other and calmly and confidently offer them recognition of what they see can be a very healing experience for the recipient, okay? And it's for you guys to recognize that as projectors is that our ability to give advice and to give recognition, ah, it can mean so much to people even if to us, it doesn't seem like it, okay? And it may not seem like it because it may be where we have been so deeply conditioned to manifest generate that we don't practice it enough or experiment with it enough, okay? That is offering our recognition to others. You know, different examples of how success can show up in one's life, of course, helping someone achieve a goal, recognizing a more efficient way and sharing about it you know, li living without exhaustion, resting when you need to rest and making a pact with yourself that you're not going to exhaust your physical form just to try to live into some promise or expectation. Okay. But, you know, living without exhaustion, uh, of course, harmony in relationships, no better type than the projector type <clears throat> to bring harmony into the relationships through being able to recognize what is so. Okay. <clears throat> and, and effective strategies and guidance for how to deal with it not just deal with it, but how to live with it, how to embody it, how to be authentic. Or it's discovering a passion and niche that doesn't exhaust your energy, but rather uh, allows you to elevate yourself to a position of recognized influence, uh, you know, like becoming a sought out advisor or developing and refining a skill, okay? Operating through the context of a system or a knowledge base or a craft, or creative process that is unique to you and is recognized by others um, that, like I said, brings a positive effect into their lives.
And of course, there is the binary. <laughs> There's the not self theme to the projector type, and the not self theme of the projector type is bitterness. Bitterness is synonymous with resentment, and resentment is a feeling of being, you know, treated misfairly. Where let's say as a projector, your work, 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 do, 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 you're exhausted, and you've done all these things, and no one around you has recognized you for your efforts. Okay, now you're bitter. Okay. Bitterness burrows deep within the core of a projector when they repeatedly force things to happen, initiate without support, or labor until exhaustion while not being recognized for who they truly are, which, you know, personally, I know this. I know this very well. <laughs> Could write a whole book on the experience of bitterness, especially as an energy projector. And if you are an energy projector, you know, resentment is especially true because again, you've got that energy and you're working hard and you're trying to live in the expectations of others and you're still tired and exhausted and not being recognized. Okay. Yeah. Bitterness, um, a sourness. It's different from frustration and it's different from anger. You know, frustration is this like visceral vibration of discontent and uh, an inability to solve a problem and feeling stuck and it vibrates out from that open and developing generator aura. And, uh, you know, anger, as I've experienced it through interaction with angry manifestors, is often a very loud and abrupt uh, and potentially damaging <laughs> uh, kind of energy. It can really have an outward, spoken, loud, impactful effect, okay? Um, where an angry manifestor may lash out in anger and scream, Projectors, it's not often the case. Um, you don't get frustrated, really, or angry. Bitterness, again, it just kind of burrows deep within the core. It's like a sourness that we hold within us. And it sort of makes us look like this, you know, or, you know, <laughs> sour face. And, you know, um, it's not necessarily something that you talk about. And it's not necessarily something that you express or let other people even know that you're feeling, okay? Because um, you want to hide. You want to hide the bitterness so you can continue to try and keep up the conditioning trip, you know. Um, or, of course, you know, um, forcing your way into conversations and providing unacknowledged or uninvited advice, unreciprocated efforts, forced initiatives where you're repeatedly trying to do things, even though it's not working, <laughs> Uh, or working too hard, mimicking other types, of course, trying to be like a generator or manifester, or of course, uh, white center conditioning, that unhealthy amplification through our openness that the projector can take in and be left feeling, you know, unhealthy and bitter. If you're bitter, like if you feel sour, <clears throat> you feel resentment, you feel unacknowledged, great. Why? Because it's a sure sign that you now know that one, you are in fact a projector type, and two, you have a strategy <clears throat> for overcoming it, okay? Because remember, um, the sense of success and the internal chemistry of bitterness is like our form consciousness and its intelligence being able to communicate with our passenger consciousness to say, hey, look, listen up, you know, you're doing something incorrectly. You're not really operating as you're designed, you know, yield. You know, yield, yield to the bitterness, yield to the resentment, yield, yield to the exhaustion and um, take a pause, you know, caution and allow yourself time, first and foremost, to rest, to recover, to maybe remove yourself if you can or distance yourself if you can from the people that you recognize or really, you know, not recognizing you and perpetuating um, actions or encouraging you to perpetuate actions that are just building more bitterness. Okay. You know, and take time to really, you know, human design is a beautiful gift for, for projectors. Take time to study your channels, to study your life force, and really to begin to see how you've been conditioned, where you're open and susceptible to that conditioning that may be bringing bitterness into your life. And, um, in contrast to your channel definition, your strengths, and unique gifts, okay? And uh, yeah, strategy, inner authority.
experiment with applying it. And um, having, again, having a trusted friend or family member that you can talk to about your bitterness, it's like, you know, can help a lot to get it off your chest. Because like I said, uh, the projectors typically hold it within them. They don't let it out in a fit of rage, like a manifester or uh, spill it out into their environment, like a generator where, you know, they may be frustrated for 30 seconds, but then they're, you know, okay, back to do to do back to work. Right. For projectors, it can really sink deep and be held on for a long time. And, um, yeah. but it can also be transformed, transmuted, cleared, released. And, um, Yeah, I can. I just like to acknowledge it as like your your form, intelligence, letting you know that you have stepped over bounds, gone oh, you know, stepped out of boundary, something. Okay. And of course, all that being said, supporting projectors super important. Um, you know, if you're a parent of a projector, being able to recognize your children as their type, super healing setting them up for success. Highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, of course, or of course, if you yourself are a projector, you know, experimenting with your strategy and inner authority, giving it a shot, trying it out, um, even consciously, you know, experimenting with not applying it, seeing what happens. Okay. It's all an experiment. Uh, of course, the advice that you often hear in the knowledge base is stop doing things before you become exhausted. You know, um, Working yourself to a point of exhaustion is too late. Um, you know, stop before you start sweating, <laughs> you know, um, unless you're really athletic and an energy type and that's your trip. But if you're a no motor projector, just, you know, preserve your quantum. Of course, experiment uh, with sleeping in your own aura. It's really important as a projector. Gives you the opportunity to release the buzz, buzz energy of the day and to be within your own self, -sanct uh, you know, self sanctuary. Really important. Um, like I mentioned earlier, being open to talking about your conditioning. Um, you know, all projectors are going to deal with some level of sacral conditioning. So that's kind of like a starting point, whether it be uh, work, sexuality relationships, reproductivity, responsibilities, commitments, um, you know, all of those areas of life, there can be a potential for imbalance when the projector pushes too hard or pushed upon too hard by others, okay? And of course, like I've said throughout the reading, or sorry, not the reading, but the presentation today is do, is do consider a reading with a trained analyst. It transformed my life as a projector to have, you know, Brian be able to objectively, <laughs> uh, you know, as, meaning like based on the facts, reveal my unique characteristics, strengths, nuances, and uh, energy dynamics. It was so healing and it helped me to really recognize the abilities that I have and to lean into them and to trust them. So yeah, reading as a, as a projector is really important. And, um, you know, for your projector friends and family, inviting them to explore human design, of course, recognizing and acknowledging their strengths. You know, maybe they're really good at mathematics or they're really good with engineering or they're amazing artists or they're fantastic singers or uh, they really have a passion for management or whatever it may be, you know, encouraging them to develop their interests while cautioning them about becoming a laborer long term, long term, you know, is really the key and important. And of course, you know, if they are bitter, hold space for them to vent and rest and feel comfortable releasing that stuff off of their chest because it can be such a healing experience and is really the first step in deconditioning, you know, just acknowledging it and letting it go and taking a deep breath and starting the ne next day feeling, feeling a little bit less sour about what happened in the past, okay? Yeah, and of course, interacting with your projector, friends and family one-on-one. -on -one when possible. Because um, again, you know, if they're projector children, they may not know this about themselves, but as a parent, um, you can, you know, 
you can, with this knowledge, know that the projector type is best one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have two or three kids and two, of, you know, say two of them are generators, one of them is the projector, and you really want to address something with that one projector child, don't do it in the context of having everybody else around. Really go to a separate room, you know, sit down with them, talk to them, allow them to express themselves, ask them questions, and uh, give them that respect of one-on-one -on -one so that they don't feel bombarded and incapable of remaining clear when they have a ton of people around them. All right, that's pretty much... <laughs> Pretty much all I had to say about the projector for today. Uh, yeah. Um, I love being a projector. I wouldn't want to be anything else. Uh, I really come to understand the strength and the role of my type over the years as being essential. And, you know, if you are a projector and you're in that space of bitterness, like I said, excellent. It verifies that you are a projector and it also gives the opportunity to start something new um, on the opposite end of the spectrum. If you are a projector and you're highly successful and uh, you know, you really feel like, wow, yeah, I have, I have been able to work my way through the ranks or evolve into a position of success through invitation, through honoring my inner authority process That's absolutely fantastic. And, um, I would only encourage you to share your process uh, with others, you know, um, with, and especially with other projectors, you know, if you, if you attain a position of success in your life, it's always great to see examples of that and how that uniquely expresses in the world uh, with people from all different backgrounds. All right. So that's pretty much all I have to say in terms of the presentation if there are any questions, uh, now would be a great time to share. Um, if you just have anything that you'd like to share with the group, maybe an insight or realization from having listened, uh, you are invited. You're welcome to do so. Oh, hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for the great presentation. I was a little bit late, but I, I got a lot of value from it. and. And I, yeah, I've been wanting to contact, well, I've been wanting to contact you because it's the second time I hear your presentation. And, um, but I I was, I was just wondering, uh, do, do you, do you also do this for organizations, you know, for like businesses or movements? Most certainly can. We definitely have the toolkit and it's something that I've been trained to uh, be able to engage in, have a passion for. Is there, are you asking specifically for something that you're involved in? That I might be involved with. I, I, well, after listening to all this, I have to wait for the invitations. <laughs> a yeah. lot of invitations. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, all the four questions, that, the main questions that you put out there, th those are the ones that are, this, those of all four are kind of been defined well except for the relationship one that that's not present but all the other ones are kind of being defined right now mm -hmm. and i'm waiting yeah i'm waiting but i was wondering have you ever worked this with constellations or systemic thera therapy i think that's how it's called because i feel like it's very linked isn't it i i don't i'm not familiar with um that practice maybe you could Maybe you could describe it a little better and I'd be able to. It's when it's when they, so systemic therapy or constellations for companies, you know, for businesses, they, they basically gather the group and they let them channel the energy that is, that is communicating with them in that moment to find the natural order mm. of roles and yeah, things like, and also to kind of see the unseen. They also do it for that. And I was, but I, yeah, I was just wondering if you have ever experimented, but can already answer that. Yeah, no, I haven't, but oh my God, I would love to. And especially if it's yeah. an, it's a, if it's a group that's open to using human design as a knowledge base, um, because there are actually charts that you can run for groups. 
There's of course the individual chart, but then you can combine uh, three to five people into a group and be able to analyze the strengths and unique skill sets and potential gaps within that group where, and then see, see a lot of the time with human design, it's like a validation technology. I like to call it that because it's, you're helping people to remind them about the strengths and gifts and particular role or function within a group that they already have within them. It's not necessarily instilling it. It's like bringing it to the surface level consciousness so that they can accept it and may, maybe make a shift within that organization to better position themselves to offer the kind of uh, advice or strategic skill that's more complementary to their nature. And if you if you have business groups that are open and flexible to receiving that kind of you know advice or wisdom it's amazing yeah um it's what i've found and what i've heard also from my teachers is that often with businesses they've see they've already done the hiring and people have already been pigeonholed into a particular role or task and they often find it very difficult to restructure um, and don't necessarily want to restructure, even if that's what the knowledge base suggests. So I don't know. I think it, from what I've heard and seen, it it's best applied in the context of like a more flexible group where they're open to the insights and uh, being able to feel recognized and, and seen. But yeah, no sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, as I said, I'll wait for the invitation, but it'll be really interesting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for your question. And Jessica is asking, as an energy projector, does that mean that you have more energy work or pressure to work? Yes. Um, and feel free to speak if you'd like, Jessica. Right there. Uh, typically it does it's it's more of a pressure and an adrenaline so for example if you are a i'll go back here an energy projector you have to find root center this is the theme of pressure adrenaline drive ambition focus longing stamina okay um and see the the thing with the energy projector again it's like brought you you're designed to be brought into or invited into a group dynamic or work one-on-one -on -one with other people where you bring the pressure the impetus and the uh the energy required to help guide the situation but not be responsible for working or operating the daily tasks associated with the system okay so yeah okay. thank you um can you hear me yeah okay thank you uh yeah, thank you for answering my question. It's a great presentation. I am starting my design, um, just kind of studying more of, of like who I am. Um, I do, my partner is another projector. So we're both one, three uh, splenic projectors, uh, but he does have a lot less energy and it's interesting to see the dynamic. Um, so I, I mean, I didn't know I was a projector up until like a year ago, as I've always been in the mindset of just like, go, 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 because I feel like I have the energy um, but it wasn't until I removed myself from just being surrounded by all project, I mean, all manifestors and generating um, manifestors. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so maybe I am not as um, energized to the things, but yeah. I am more energized than my boyfriend. Um, yeah. He's not an energy. He's actually an ego. Um, I don't know if he's an ego projected, but he has his ego defined. But no, he's splenic. Um, and he always has a lot less energy and I was, I didn't understand why, but now I understand why. Yeah. But I'm looking, hard. I'm looking at your chart. I'm looking at your chart because you did send me your data. Um, just to double check birth data, uh, January 22nd. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you are a pr pressure projector. You have a fine root to the spleen and you have the channel of struggle, sign of stubbornness, and this is actually an athletic channel. Um, I've seen a number of different athletes who are, you know, for example, you know, do you know who Lance Armstrong is? Yes. So famous cyclist, fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. But he was, like you, uh, an energy projector. Um 
there's a number of different famous, I was really into cycling in my previous life, sort of still am, but so I looked at a lot of professional charts. You have an athletic channel in your design as a projector. <laughs> so I don't, like, I don't want to be athletic at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, not to, not to say that you necessarily want to be athletic, but it's referred to as an athletic uh, channel. So it, it gives you this drive and this adrenalized pressure and yeah. ambition uh, and the longing, the passion uh, to engage. Yeah. So yeah, there's differences as you would have seen with the categories, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting to see how is um, how the energy kind of with my partner how it's everything you know coming together and how the differences between both because we're pretty similar but different yeah so thank you you're welcome hi it's luma hi luma hi just want, yeah <laughs> just want to say thank you so much i was so well done like uh and i've been living living my projector design for eight years now and um you know just want to say anyone who's starting out on your projector awareness journey just keep going because life gets better and better and better um and uh yeah I was I had a my first full reading with Ryan seven years ago it was like life changing transformative um so I'm just like really grateful that you're doing this presentation Ryan it's like so important and uh um, I just love hanging out with other projectors too. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of special. It's kind of special. Love love my generator friends so much. My manifesting generator friends, they're awesome. But it's just like kind of a different thing to to be in a whole little field here with all projectors. Mm -hmm. right. Um just that that recognition of of uh, the uniqueness of, of what we are and what we bring. And you really highlighted that. Um, really beautiful, lots of really great nuggets, even though, you know, I've been aware and doing self-study for a lot of years, there was a, like a lot of nice, a lot of like highlighted points that really popped out uh, in your presentation today that I'm really grateful. I was able to tune in here early morning on the West Coast. <laughs> um, yeah, so just thanks a lot.